die, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this, he said? For I know that my Redeemer lives. And at last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then from my flesh I shall see God, who I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall, shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me, for we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. Amen. The Lord's name be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. We have come this morning on this beautiful morning. Yes. And we thank God for giving us the opportunity to come today to this prayer house uh, that we might celebrate. And even though it says the memorial services, we celebrate the life of the late sister Mary Lise Green. Yes. I want to proclaim that Jesus is already here. Yes. And I want you to know that sister Mary was not uh, a, a verbal person. She didn't say a whole lot. But one thing I do know, she enjoyed worship service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I ask that those of you who are not members of the family, would you stand? And let us sing with the choir our hymn of praise, number 450. We will sing verses 1 and 3. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Without any further line, let us sing to God's glory. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Father, we bow, Heavenly Father. We bow, giving you all praise, glory, and honor. 
We magnify, we glorify, we lift you up, Heavenly Father. Lord, because it's all about you, Master. Lord, we just want to say thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for one, Sister Green, Heavenly Father, that you allowed and just talk with us just for a little while, Master. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus right now that you bless this family, Heavenly Father. Strengthen them on each and every day. Heavenly Father, don't leave them alone. Lord, continue to stand by them, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, their hearts are hidden, Master. But Lord, we put it all in your hand. We know that you can do all things but faith. Now, Father of God, continue to lead, guide, direct them, Heavenly Father. And Master, as your word about to come forth, Heavenly Father, take it down in your divine treasure, Heavenly Father, that she may bring something out, Heavenly Father, that will stir our hearts, Master. Heavenly Father, not for no long prayer, Master. Lord, when it's all said and done, Master, when, when we come down to our last day, Heavenly Father, when we can't offer our song anymore. Lord, when we can't offer our prayer anymore, Heavenly Father. We pray, Heavenly Father, that when you call us, Heavenly Father, it will be well with our soul. But in Jesus' name, these and all the blessings we ask, we cut it all down. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you.
about Sister Green. Like Reverend Carter said, she came here under the leadership of Reverend E.O. Simmons. Sister Green has served God in this church for over 20 years. Amen. She was a very quiet spirit. Amen. When she first came here, she would just come in, never make any noise, and she would always sit directly in the back. But as the Holy Spirit began to move in her, you would see her stopping her feet, clapping her hand, and sometimes if you look at her hard enough, you would hear her say, thank you, Jesus. So that let me know that she walked daily with the Lord. As I observed her, she would come. She would, sometimes the bus stop was down there. She would come when it's hot off yeah. the bus. In the afternoon, you would see her go back and wait on the bus. Sometimes the bus would leave and she would have to wait an hour. But that didn't bother Sister Green because she knew why she came here. And then I would go in the city and I would see her get off that bus to wait on another bus to transfer up to North Charleston. And she continued that for years. She didn't give anybody any trouble. When it was time to pay her offering, she would come on up, just a quiet spirit. And the leader, she had two leaders before me, and I spoke with each of them, and we all came to the same conclusion, that she was a quiet member. But you know, church, she was faithful. The song was sound, I will trust in the Lord. Sister Green trusted in the Lord not for one thing, but for all things. And she didn't trust him in the summer and not in the winter. She trusted him 365 days a year. Now, you know, a whole lot of people talk this thing. Some could sing, some could pray, and some could preach. But it's hard to live the life of the Lord. But she lived it. And the reason why I know, because she kept coming. So as I looked at her, I said, Lord, have mercy. She would come sometime in the rain. And there's a song that was sung, come and go with me to my father's house. Amen. Sister Green knew that when she came to her father's house, there was singing in the house. She knew that they were clapping in the house. She knew that they were teaching and shouting in the house. She knew that it was preaching in the house. And my God, she knew that it was peace in this house. And truly, she felt loved in this house. But most of all, the most important thing that kept her coming to this house of God, she knew that Jesus was in the house. And as long as Jesus was in this house, Sister Green knew that everything will be all right, even though every day was not Sunday in her life but she trusted in God. Yeah. We came here today to celebrate her life because she was a woman of strong faith. Like I said, she believed in the Lord. When I would go and visit with her, she was quiet, but you know, I didn't realize that she could talk a lot. When you question her, she will answer. So I like to talk, everybody know that. So I talked to her and she talked to me. But before I would leave, I would say, Sister Green, are you praying? Yes, ma'am. I'm praying. I said, you trust her? Yes, ma'am. I'm trusting in the Lord. And then when I would offer her a prayer, she would fervently put her head down and close her eye because she gave reverence to her God. You understand? And so then as I began to go back and see her, I see where she was getting a little tired. So on last Sunday, I heard our pastor say that hospice came in. So I went and I visited with Sister Green. And when I walked in her room, she was beautiful. Gloria knows this. She had looked like the picture of health made there. 
But now, she did not respond to me physically, but I began to pray. And when I called on the name of the Lord, tears came down. Amen. I did not know that those tears was telling me that Sister Green was getting ready because her eyes was fixed on her master, her Lord and Savior. So the flesh was telling me goodbye, but the spirit was getting ready to meet him up in the air. So I'm going to say to the family and especially to glory, God got a special place for you because you stuck with Sister Green. I know you love her and I know all the other family love her. But I want you all to know, God love her best. Amen. If she had the opportunity to come back here right now, she would not want to. So cry, Gloria. Let her go. But just know that if you live in Christ and you die, you will live again. So just know that Sister Green is absent from the body, but she's now present. What's God? Amen. 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 You all have a blessing. Thank you. Today we have with us Dr. David Prosser from Beacon Hospice, and at this time I invite him to come and make remarks. Following that, we'll have a special reading by Sister Karen Green. Blessings and honor be to the Lord Jesus Christ and to all that's in the ministry here, Pastor, and to the believing family. Express to you our heartfelt uh, condolences from Deacon Hospice. Uh, we uh, want to serve you where we can, but also as a man of God, I want to address you. I did not have the privilege of knowing uh, Sister Green. Uh, sad to say, uh, I was. Refer, she was referred to me one day before she passed. Uh, but yet, even though I did not know her in the natural, I knew her. <clears throat> Let me say it again. Though I did not know her in the natural, I still knew her. Because I was a part of her family. And uh, from the words that uh, I have heard thus far, she sounded like she was a quiet, meek uh, lady of God. Amen. And if you can hear this, it's almost hard for me to comprehend uh, a black spiritual lady being quiet. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that I appreciate about the black spiritual community is that that you express your relationship, and I don't want to say faith, I want to say your relationship with God in a matter that, uh, and I don't mean to bring this up, but in a matter that few of the white people can do. And so therefore, it's not, hard, it's not easy for me to comprehend someone being quiet and, you know, in, in, in a setting of this, but yet I know that from what I understand, she was a meek person. Yes. But let me under, let me just say this: that we don't need to get confused. We don't need to confuse meekness with weakness. Yes. Yes. You can be a meek person, but not that don't have to be a weak person. Yes. And I found this out firsthand a few months ago, a couple of months ago, when I had an uncle that passed. And my uncle was mentally challenged. And yet, the, 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 the night before he passed, I was there with the family, and the Holy Spirit began to allow me to see into this man. And as I began to peer into this man, even though he was quiet, you know, and he did not have the mind to express himself like you or I would. 
yet I knew that he loved God. He loved God with all his, all his heart. And it's sadly to say that it was only at the last few moments of his life that I really began to see into this man. And as I began to look, I saw a spiritual giant. So I say in words, in closing, I say that even though Sister Green may be quiet, I somehow sensed that there was a spiritual giant in there. And I know that when we are able to uh, meet her on the day of resurrection, that I will recognize her, even though I never saw her, I will recognize her spirit to spirit. And I'll be, I'll be able to say, hey, I was there in your more, in memory of you in the service, but now I get to meet the spiritual giant that you really want. So I just want to just leave you with these words. We celebrate you. We celebrate with her because, uh, because she has left this world. But she's in the presence of the Lord and that only her can understand. We cannot only we cannot begin to comprehend the very level of presence of the Lord that she's in right now. So I leave you with these words. Rejoice. For one has gone on to receive her reward. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, sir. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Uh, there's a word from the Lord. Amen. And uh, Sister Tara knows how I get it this time. And just as I stood, I'm getting ready to move on without her. <laughs> But she would not have the opportunity today to tell me about this. So this time, it's a terrible call. Good morning. I'm free. Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following the path that God laid for me. I took God's hand when I heard the call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, or play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found that place at the close of the day. If I'm parting has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss, ah yes, these things I too will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full, I savored much, good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my times seem all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your heart and share with me. God wanted me now. God has set me free. Thank you, Sister Tara. Praise the Lord again, everybody. I give on to the presence of the Holy Ghost. I want to say to uh, God the Prosser, it can get kind of quiet in here sometimes, too. Amen? But even though she was a quiet-natured person, you could tell, amen, when she knew that the Holy Spirit was moving in the house of the Lord. And so, therefore, I must, as the pastor, but not only the pastor, just as a child of God who loves God, know how Again, Dr. Prosser, to the officers, members, visiting friends, and all of you who have come today to be a part of this celebration, and most especially to you, the family of the late Sister Mary Green. I want you to know that I offer as the pastor on behalf of this entire family, and I need to back up the Marie family, but also Grand Amy Church family, because she has been a part of this family, Amen. as you've heard amen. earlier, for well over 20 years. Amen. And so we all, amen, amen. will uh, miss Sister Mary. She's a part of all of us. Amen. But I say to you, I would pray that this service today will be used uh, as a method to draw you closer to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, because the death angel will be back. Amen. We're not certain where the death angel will go the next time. Amen. But it depends that we all will be ready when our name is called, the matriarchs and patriarchs will always sing, I'll be somewhere listening. If my name is 
right. Amen. So praise God. I didn't get up to do all that right now. I'm going to invite the choir to sing verses 1, 2, and 3 of hymn 381. There's not a friend. There's not a friend like the Lord Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend. Can I say it again? There's not a friend. Just let me say it one more time. There's not a friend like the Lord Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Why are you saying? There's not a friend.
Jesus. We praise him today. Once again, we honor each of you that's present under the sound of my voice. And again, most especially you, the bereaved family. And let me say that certainly we extend our condolences to you. I'm not going to do like some folks say, don't cry. But I want you to cry like believers cry. See, we got hope. Yes. It's been said a couple of times today, if we live right, if we're in our right places and connection with God, amen, amen one day we're going to leave here. Yes. And then we'll be able to be with uh, Sister Mary again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, words of comfort. I want you to know that sometimes in all that we say or do and how Lord is quietly is saying, it may be at that time where we're hearing it, but it's not really doing anything, but on the, in the days ahead, I want you to know that when the song has been sung, the remarks that have been made, if you could just grasp on to the word of the Lord, yeah. praise him, God, when, you, when your hearts are heavy, when, when, when the room has nobody in it but you, and when the chair is empty, right. even though Sister Mary didn't talk a whole lot, she did talk, Amen. praise God, Amen. Amen, but I want you to know the word of the Lord, your faith will come by hearing, and hear my word of God. I'm going to invite those of you who have your Bibles, and if you notice, I don't have one up here, but I have the word in front of me. I had it printed out, Amen. and I don't apologize for it. Uh, sometimes when I get the Bible and, and my papers and everything, I have a, a slight impediment in my fingers. Yes. Amen? Yes. But I can't praise God. Amen. So then I do what I need to do to make things, amen, amen. possible for me. Amen. The fifth chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, and you know, I'm going to read the first 11 verses. Amen. And then we're going to concentrate on um, verse 11. I'm reading from the New International Version. Amen. Matthew 5, verse 11. He said, and this is Jesus, not Deborah Carter. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be confident. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. And you'll go on to verse 12. Rejoice, be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. 11 says, bless. Are you when people insult you, persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me? And verse 12 says, just rejoice yes. and be glad yes. because great is your reward in heaven. And I'm going to stop there. I'm going to use for a thought for just a few moments, Blessed Mary. Amen. Now, as we read this scripture, there are those who pronounce the word blessed and then blessed. Okay. Now where I was read, uh, Dr. Prosser, we said blessed. Yes. Amen? Yes. But I found out when I go into other areas, right. it depends on uh, you know, the demographics, they said blessed. Right. So to hear me say blessed, it might uh, get a response like, you don't think she really knew how to pronounce that word? <laughs> but I like blessed. Okay. Blessed Mary. Sweet Mary, yes. meek Mary, yes. smiling Mary, yes. tender Mary, yes. not causing trouble Mary. Yes. Mary kind of reminds me of the song that says, any way you fix it, yes. it'll be all right with me. Certainly she did not go unnoticed upon my arrival here. Amen. And I left her hugging Mary. Amen. You know, there are some folk that really don't appreciate hugs. Okay. As a matter of fact, 
they don't even gravitate towards you if you go to love them. Mighty see something used to say, you know, I don't know what's wrong with you. Can't you tell that some people are not really interested in hugging? But you know what? If you hug them enough, they'll hug you back. Bless, blessed me. And, and as I pray about today, what the Lord would have me to say, this is where he led me. To the Beatitudes that talks about the character of people who love the Lord. Because see, everybody in the Bible says, that says, Lord, Lord, shall not enter. Will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And so therefore, if a person loves the Lord, these Beatitudes, exactly what it says, this is where you ought to be. Praise God. The word blessed, a blessed means happy. And so this is a statement that Jesus, or these are statements, the first eight, it's statements that Jesus is saying before he does this sermon. It's the beginning of the sermon. And he's talking about how the character of people ought to be. The preacher, we don't have to worry, that's what I said, he said. Yes. Not Carla said, not anybody else said, but he said, Jesus said. Uh -huh. He was a preacher. Yes. He was a prince of preachers. Yes. We've got a lot of good preachers. Sometimes somebody tells me I'm one, but I don't live by that. Yes. I just want to be saved and love the Lord. Yes. Thank yes. you for the gift and the position that he's given me to do this. But Jesus was the great preacher, the prophet of the church. He came into the world to be the light of the world. There were a lot of great, a lot of great prophets. Even the, the, the forerunner, John, they had done virtuously in preaching, but Christ excelled them all. Amen. The place where he was preaching was the mountain in Galilee. As in other things, so in this, our Lord Jesus was but ill accommodated. He had no convenient place to preach. We remember the scripture says, foxes have holes that birds have nests, but the son of man have no place to lay his head. So it is. He didn't have a ground African Methodist Episcopal Church to preach from a pulpit. But while the scribes and Pharisees had Moses to tear the city with all the possible ease, the honor, and the state, and all they did was corrupt, amen, the law of our Lord Jesus Christ. The great teacher, the preacher Jesus, is driven into the desert, finds no pulpit other than a mountain can afford. Praise God. Yeah. Folk today will come and sit on comfortable views. Amen. 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 But sometimes I turn on the television and you listen to folk that can't even go into a prayer house, but they'll do more worship and praise than Amen. Amen. Jesus didn't have a pulpit, but but he used a mountain and he began to do this sermon. And you know what? It wasn't any of the great mountains. It wasn't the mountains of Zion, but a common mountain by which Christ would imitate that holiness is not confined within your buildings, within your fine uh, cathedrals, wherever it is that you want to spend some time with the Lord. Amen. That's where holiness this can be. I thought about Blessed Mary. Because like some of us, the home that we live in, Mary didn't have that. She and I did not discuss, but when I first came here, she, she was rigid. She was living in a home, and then she went to one nursing home, and then ended up over at the now Riverside. But you know what? She didn't allow where she lived. Amen. 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 To affect the character that she had. She did have some challenges. Yes. But oh my God, she knew, amen, yes, that there was somebody bigger, yes. amen, than her and us, amen. amen. Blessed amen. Mary. Yes. So here it is, the preacher of all times, he's preaching on a mountain, and who is he talking to? All right. His order to the listeners was his disciples, who came to him because he called them, amen? amen. Now, to them he directed this speech, because what? They followed him for love and learning. Amen. Mary wasn't on no board. Hallelujah. Amen. Mary didn't sing on the choir. Amen. Mary wasn't on the usher board. She wasn't on the floral guild. She wasn't on the wheel of workers. She wasn't on anything. But she came faithfully. 
sat on her pew yeah. in the house of the Lord. Yeah. When Christ said, if two or three yeah. gather in my name, yeah. there am I in the midst of them. Yeah. It did not have to be Graham Church. Yeah. It could have been on that bus that Sister Brown was talking about. Yeah. He just said that when two or three of us are gathered in his name, yeah. there am I in the midst of them. Yeah. Oh, I praise God. Yeah. Amen. This morning. Even though he taught his disciples because they were willing to be taught. I'm not going to be long, but you know there's some folks that don't want to be, don't want to be taught. There, there's also a lot of folks that think that uh, it's just foolishness uh, to teach, amen. It's therefore a requisite though for a child of God to be taught so that you can go teach. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. And I'm going to say this. Mary taught. Somebody said, well, she, she didn't know. Okay, now. Okay. Let me get my words right because sometimes I'm not impediment of time. What I'm saying is, she taught. She may not have talked a lot, but she taught. Amen. She was, she was like Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Because see, Jesus taught many times too without saying a word. Amen. My God, have mercy. Amen. 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 He was like a sheep. Amen. Amen. And they dragged him, hallelujah. They, that, that showed that he was teaching them that, that, that I'm going, I'm going to die, and I'm going to die for the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We often love to refer to the fact that he's on the cross. And we sing the song, he didn't say a word, but he did. He looked down at those who were crucified, and he said, Father, Amen. give them. For they know not what they do. My members may get upset with me, but God just gave that to me while I was sitting there and Brown was talking about okay. how she stood at the bus stop yeah. yes. ran and cold and heated. Yeah. 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 On one occasion, having been there for an hour because the bus had gone, oh, yeah. mm. God has moved me to say that that's an area where we were weak. Yeah. Yeah. We have cars, yeah. all kinds of them. Yeah. Church didn't have a church bus at that time. But Sister Mary didn't allow the fact that I got to kiss that bus. And it may leave me and I may have to wait. But I'm going to go to the house of the Lord yeah. in the presence of God yeah. to worship the Lord. Who yeah. oh, I praise you today, God. Mm, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Well, Christ begins his sermon with blessings. For he came into the world to bless us. Yes. As a great high priest. Amen. Of our profession. He came into the world as a blessing. Melchizedek, as he, whom all the families of the earth, the word is saying, will be blessed. He came not only, though, to purchase a blessing for us, but he came to pour out and pronounce blessings on us. Amen. And here he does it. Amen. As having authority. As one that command a blessing. Even life forevermore. And that is a blessing here again and again promised to the good of his pronouncing. Them happy makes them so. For those whom he blesses, we are blessed this year. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said when God bless you, Amen. you're blessed indeed. Amen. Oh, we call ourselves blessing each other. Amen. Amen. But we come short. Amen. The Old Testament ended, you know, with a curse. The gospel begins with a blessing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For here unto are we called that we should inherit the blessing. Yeah. Each of the blessings that Christ here pronounces has a double intention. To show how they are that are to be accounted truly happy. You want to be happy? The commercial used to say, Got milk? You want to be happy? I'm going to ask. Got Jesus? That's how you be happy. Even when there's nothing to be happy about. Even when things are not going the way that you so desire them to go. Sister Mary had some challenges and she had some trouble. Oh my God, she had some discomforts. But I believe she was 
happy. Yes. Amen. 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 I think I said to Sister Gloria the other day that even over at Riverside, I shared with the group that goes over uh, once a month to do ministry there that, that I could see her going from glory to glory. Oh, I praise God. I thank her today, Jesus. She even said to me, I said, Sister Mary, it seems as though that you're like what you are and you're doing well. She says, yes, I do. Sister Brown mentioned something, and I want to talk about respect and reverence and manners. She reverenced the Lord. She loved God. She respected him. And you know what? Not only that, I watched her. I listened. Yes, ma'am. Humble, yes. reverend, yes. even to the woman of God, yes. Blessed Mary, yes. she was unique, one of a kind, hallelujah. Oh, I thank the Lord Jesus. I give the name the praise. Jesus wants us to understand that our characters ought to be as he's mentioned in these statements. What that is wherein true happiness consists of promises that's made to the promise of certain characters. <coughs> The performance of which will make them happy, not when they get to heaven. Oh, glory. That's what we're aiming for. But to be happy right now, while the blood's running warm in your veins, listen to As I look at the statements, I think of her and all of them, but there are some special. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is. The kingdom of heaven. Praise God. Yes. See, that's obviously for people who got pride. Yes. When you know, amen, if the poor spirit understands that you ain't got it all made. Yes. The poor spirit understands that whatever God has blessed you with tangible in, if you don't have Desire is, yeah. amen, to, to have a feeling yeah. 
Are the quench, amen, that drive us, that's in your throat? Yeah. Mary had a home with a service in the spirit. Yeah. 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 It's all right. Then it said, blessed. Yes. Yes, Lord. It's all right. Are the peacemakers. Yes. yes. For they will be called children of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was a peacemaker. Yeah. And not only because she didn't talk a whole lot. That was just a part of her character. Yeah. They will be called the children of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Better than those who persecute. Because of righteousness. I'm sorry, best of those who are persecuted because of righteousness. But theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Somebody say, well, no, they persecuted me. Mary. <coughs> Quiet. She came in, went out. Persecution. You don't always have to do something. Sometimes it's what you don't do. Amen. 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 So the Bible says, if it's because of righteousness, there's the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you do for righteousness' sake, and righteousness means just that right, being right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. It says, listen to you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. That's what Jesus said. Well, yes. But we Mary, but the yeah, 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 yeah. We're so eager to love and hug the ones that we know yeah. and the ones that can do so much for us yeah. and be there with us. But folk, so, amen. Yeah. Who are not in that category. Yeah. Whether we intend to do it or not, yeah. Yeah. if we walk away without a hug. Oh my God, that the glory, oh 
my God that shall be revealed to us. Yes. Oh, blessed Mary, yes. you had some good days and you've had some hills to climb. Yes. You had some sleepless nights, you had some weary days, yes. you had some moments of loneliness, but you are rejoicing today yes. in the presence of God. Yes. I say, family, hold on to God's unchanging hands. Grand family, hold on to God's unchanging hands. Yes. Jesus is coming back again. Yes. Oh, I'll be some. 